Hello everyone, my name is Brian, but you can call me the Bugler, and today we're going to be talking about the Night Stalker Hunter subclass and the skill tree, the Way of the Pathfinder. The melee ability is called Vanish in Smoke. This skill allows you to throw a smoke bomb which will make you and your teammates invisible for a short period of time. After that, we have Lockdown, a simple but effective skill that increases the duration of all of your grenades. We also have two super modifiers, the first of which is called Heart of the Pack. This skill makes it so killing enemies that are tethered will increase you and your teammates' stats and also grant orbs of light. Finally, we have Mobius Quiver. This skill changes your shadow shot to allow you to fire multiple arrows, which deal critical hits to already tethered enemies. Let's start with the melee ability. Vanish and Smoke is making a return from Destiny 1, and it's just as effective. It allows you and your teammates to be invisible for up to 6 seconds, which means enemies will ignore you. However, you can cut this time short by shooting your weapon, using an ability, or trying to summon a vehicle. The smoke bomb can also be used as a weapon. It deals damage on impact and when it explodes. However, I wouldn't recommend this because the total damage would only be about half of a regular melee attack. Now let's talk briefly about what happens when you become invisible. If an enemy sees you become invisible, they will continue to shoot at the spot that they last saw you. You can still take damage while invisible, however, it won't turn you visible again until the time runs out. The enemy will continue to shoot where they last saw you until they see you again. So in this situation, the enemy just keeps shooting at that area until he sees me again, even though at that point he had lost interest and walked away. Let's move on to Lockdown. This is a skill that is as excellent as it is simple. It increases the duration of all of your grenades. Every grenade that the Night Stalker has access to, the Vortex, the Spike, and the Voidwall grenade, all last for 4 seconds. With Lockdown, however, they will last for 8 seconds. Their duration is exactly doubled. Although, their damage will not be doubled, because the Vortex and the Voidwall grenade both deal an initial damage that is different from the ticks that follow. We'll cover those more in depth when we do the final Night Stalker comparison video for both skill trees. Before we move on to the super modifiers, we have to take a look at the base version of the tether so we have something to compare it to. The tether will last for 5 seconds. This is the duration in which an enemy can be tethered. However, there are some exceptions. Let me show you. In this example, we're going to take a closer look at some of the more nuanced interactions of the tether. When you first shoot the tether, it will not tether enemies. You can see here that it hits the ground and then explodes a short time after into tethers. At this point, you may also notice that our tether does not stop at 5 seconds. That is because every enemy that enters the tether's range will increase its duration and grant orbs of light. As long as there are enemies around, the tether can stay indefinitely. You may have also noticed, however, that despite our tether lasting for 23 seconds, we only granted 5 orbs of light. This is the same max that I observed when testing the Titan Supers during this public event. I believe the tether is capped at 5 orbs like all other supers until you unlock the modifiers. Let's take a look at the damage increase next. All enemies tethered will take 35% more damage, and that damage is shared between the enemies that are tethered. When they die, they will explode, similar to the bloom effect from the Voidwalker Warlock. There are some exceptions to this rule, however. Heavy weapons, in general, do not grant that increase in damage. You can see here, I'm testing this with the sword, and the damage I deal while the enemy is tethered is the exact same amount that I deal when they are not tethered. I've tested this with every single heavy weapon and found the same results, as you'll see now. Let's talk about the super modifier, Heart of the Pack, next. More specifically, its ability to grant you stat increases. When you kill enemies that are tethered, you gain stacks of Heart of the Pack. This increases up to 3 times and lasts for 30 seconds from when you kill the last enemy. 
In the split screen here, you see I have four mobility on top and eight on the bottom. When the stack runs out, you can see I move much slower with the four mobility than I did with the eight mobility. And that is because, like all stats, mobility has diminishing returns. So you will see more of an increase at lower mobilities than you will at higher mobilities. I tested this using every mobility that I could for the hunter and found that the stack increase is equivalent to the stat increase that you gain. This means that at 4 mobility with a times 3 stack, your mobility is effectively 7. I also assume that the other two stats work in the same way, although they are much harder to test, so I cannot confirm this. And here I am again at 8 mobility just to show you how small the difference is between having the stack and not having the stack while walking. Let's take a look at the amount of orbs we can gain by using Heart of the Pack. We gain orbs by killing enemies with Heart of the Pack. In this example, I did not unlock Mobius Quiver yet, just as a baseline for how many orbs we could create this way. And in this example, we have a super that can last for 20 seconds and we generate 10 orbs. That is the most orbs I've been able to gain with any character at all so far. In fact, it's exactly double than what we were able to gain without Heart of the Pack activated. It will be interesting to see if any subclass will be able to dethrone this, although I have a feeling that none of them will. And finally, we have the super modifier Mobius Quiver. This skill is much like Quiver from Destiny 1, except it is not capped at three extra arrows. So we can shoot more than three arrows while our super is activated. Once you shoot your first arrow, you have six seconds to follow up with any additional arrows. These arrows have the same tether duration as the arrows without this skill. So five seconds, with some caveats that we'll get to eventually you're able to fire up to five arrows with this skill if you shoot them back to back. Now onto the damage dealing properties. Mobius Quiver allows you to deal additional damage to enemies that are tethered, and this stacks depending on how many tethers are on the enemy, unlike regular damage which does not stack with more tethers. When the enemy is tethered once and you hit them with an additional arrow, they receive 1.7 times the base damage, if they have two tethers on them, they receive 1.7 times the previous amount of damage, or 2.9 times the base damage. This does behave rather strangely though, which I'll show you in the next example. You may have noticed this in my previous example, but you are unable to gain the extra damage from the arrow unless an enemy is actively tethered. That means that because of the brief delay between when an arrow hits and when an enemy is tethered, you may not be able to stack the damage twice. So here, because I fire the shots too quickly and not wait for the tether to activate, I'm unable to stack my damage. Let's move on to the Mobius Quiver's ability to generate orbs, and quite frankly, it's a little disappointing. A hidden effect of unlocking the Mobius Quiver skill is that your tethers will not increase in duration when you tether enemies as much as they did previously. So here, you can see the tether that lasts the longest only lasts for 10 seconds, even though enemies are continuing to run in it. Because of this, I'm only able to generate 7 orbs. So if you're looking to generate the most orbs, you might not want to unlock this skill just yet. And that's the end of our breakdown. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions about how I conducted the tests or why I might not have included other footage, let me know in the comments. A lot of what I do does not make it into these videos because I want to keep them as concise as possible, so I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. In our next videos, we're going to be finishing up the Night Stalker Hunter, so that means the other subclass plus the grenade and super comparison. You should expect the first of these videos over the next couple of days. So once again, thanks for watching, I hope I see you next time, and good luck getting through the exclusion zone.